Hi, this is Sandeep. In this video, we will understand why you should use React over JavaScript or any other framework and how React works behind the scenes. I'm going to cover a brief introduction to React and its features. We will understand the traditional way of rendering templates using JavaScript and why it's expensive to render into the DOM. We will see what is virtual DOM and why it has made React so popular in JavaScript community. And finally, we will compare the performance benefits of React over JavaScript in a demo by creating a simple digital clock example. Let's get started. First things first, what is React? React is a JavaScript library used to create user interfaces. If you have heard of MVC, you can replace the view section of it with React. React is declarative, component-based, and it's learn once, write anywhere library. That means you can use React to create and render UI components on client side as well as server side. This was just a brief introduction to React. Now let's see how we can render the templates using JavaScript. To render dynamic content into browser, we need two things, data and HTML template. Say suppose we want to show an employee details. We will have an employee object and employee template string. Then we combine the data and template to produce the final output and we give it to the browser to render and display. And the browser creates a DOM structure of this final output. Now what is DOM? DOM is a document object model, which is just a collection of nodes represented as a tree structure. Now say suppose our employee has been moved from New York to LA, we have a new data, and we need to update our view with this new data. Again, we will combine this new data with the template string and render the final output into the browser and the browser will have new DOM structure. Let's assume once again, we have a new data, but this time data hasn't changed at all, but we still render it into the DOM. This is how traditional rendering works. We render the template as we receive new data. And browser doesn't complain about it as it's a program with no emotions. And there is nothing wrong in doing this, but this rendering operation inside the browser is expensive because browser has to go through a sequence of steps each time it has to render the new DOM structure. That's why the smart developers in Facebook has introduced React and Virtual DOM. Now let's understand the same scenario we have just seen using React. We have an employee object and a template. We create this template in React using JSX. React combines this data and template, but instead of rendering into the DOM directly, it creates a copy of this DOM structure. This new DOM structure or copy of actual DOM is called a virtual DOM. And you can think of this virtual DOM is like a friend to the real DOM, to the browser DOM. Now, as we have created the virtual DOM for the first time, it's going to render the same as it is into the browser as a real DOM. And the browser is going to display the output. Now say suppose we have new data, like our employee has been moved from New York to LA. This time React will create a new copy of the virtual DOM combining this new data. And it's going to compare this new copy of virtual DOM with the previous copy of virtual DOM. The important point is, all of this is happening inside the memory. Nothing is getting rendered into the real DOM. As we have difference in both copies, React will go ahead and smartly creates a new DOM structure with least number of changes. 
It updates the browser DOM with these new changes, but it renders only the least changes and not the entire DOM. Because of this new type of rendering, we get performance benefits as we are not rendering the entire DOM. We just render part of it. Now say suppose we get new data, but nothing has changed if we compare with the previous data. React will go ahead and create another copy of the virtual DOM and compares with the previous one. But it sees nothing has changed. It says, hey browser, don't worry, we have nothing to render as nothing has changed. Hence, I'm going to keep it as a copy to compare next time. You can see how the new friend to browser DOM, the virtual DOM is helping it with performance by just giving the required changes to render and making it happy. Now let's understand this through a demo. In this demo, I'll create a digital clock using traditional template string method and then the same clock using React. I'll show you the rendering comparison of both the clocks. To save time, you can see I have project setup handy. I'm going to use Plunker to demo this code. I have created containers for JavaScript clock and React clock in HTML. I have written a tick function where I'm storing the current time in a time constant. This time constant will be our data, which I'm combining with a template string and rendering it inside JS clock element. Finally, I'm calling the tick function, but we can see only the current time a clock is not ticking. Let's tick it by calling the tick function once per second using set interval function. Awesome. Our clock is ticking now. Now let me open the dev tools and the elements panel. You can see with each tick, the entire clock dev element is getting updated. Now I'm going to create the same digital clock using React. I'm going to create a new copy of this tick function and call it tick react. Let's convert this HTML template into JSX expression and render it inside react clock element. Let's call this new tick function using set interval. Voila, you can see both the clocks are running now. Let me open the dev tools again. And you can see here inside elements, our JavaScript clock is updating the entire div element, but react is updating only the span element. It's updating only least part of the DOM where we have changes and not the entire div element. This is just a small app, but you can imagine how significant it will be when the application is large. We'll have significant performance improvement in a large application. You must be thinking, why can't we just target the span element in JavaScript clock and update it? It will give us same output as React clock. But think about a table component where we are updating stock market data. Do you think keeping track of each small cell is a good idea? This is the beauty of React, where it handles all of this tracking of individual elements and let the developer focus on writing the application. In summary, we have seen how traditional JavaScript templating works and the issues it has with performance while rendering into the DOM. And we have seen how React chime in here and updates only the least required parts of the DOM. And finally, we did a comparison of this DOM rendering through a digital clock example. Now you know why you should use React over JavaScript or any other JavaScript frameworks. Go ahead and explore React more to make something amazing. And finally, thanks for watching.